talk about and bring up or deal with. You ought to be praising the Lord if we made it through the storm. I probably should have said something more about Elson and Alton Jones and then we're taking the group up on Saturday, uh, Friday. How are y'all leaving? Yeah. We're kind of on standby. So you may not be going. Stanley's got some, uh, I guess you say, some dealers out We're trying to find some people that need some help. So we're probably going to be going to the meeting Saturday morning instead of Friday night. Just go so up one day. Go up in the day and come back. Yes, sir. Okay. So it'll be a one day trip on Saturday. I know we got a lot of stuff going on around here with the cookout, fundraising, and all that. But if you'd like to do the, the uh, exact plate, I think we had seven already signed up. And uh, so, um, if you're willing to go, you'll see Stan, I mean, see him, and he'll be in touch with Stan. You don't actually have to have a training uh, to go on this one. They can use you in regards to that, especially when we're getting folks that are just going to places. Ken, we may have some connections with Brandon, uh, and we might can find out about tomorrow. I know Tish has folks up there. I do too, up in the uh, Louisville area. David Addy, our former youth minister, is not too far from there, and they got tons of connections. As a matter of fact, we follow Lisa through the post on all the stuff. She was trying to keep over her grandmother and everywhere the nursing home and Louisville got hit in the ER and all that's connected. So kind of connected to the hospital. So all that got, got hit in regards to that. Testimonies, I heard a little bit about uh, Devon's Gate Sales Plains. I came by last night in the midst of the storm. And then I saw Everett at LC today. Uh, they had a great crowd even in the midst of the storm last night as part of the school. And uh, we came through there at 10 after 7. I know we had some decisions. We had 40 something people there on Monday night and had some decisions out of that. So, anybody else been this morning? Go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. What are you going to say? You want to talk about your guy? Well, yeah, I've been having a storm since the whole storm thing. Y'all pray for this man's name is John.
maybe the third time would be a John. Keep saying he's going to leave and go home. That's what he told the last time. He's still here. We had a good talk. We talked about everything, how we live. And you know, it costs $13 to take a shower at home. I didn't realize that. $13 is a lot to take a shower. Um, we, we had a long talk. You've heard the gospel. And now he, you know, and that's probably not the first time he has it. Well, maybe the first time he heard it the way he did. And uh, just pray for him. Remember John? Just pray for him. If you go on the bridge, look for him. Like good ten. Or if you go in McDonald's, he's going to be sitting outside. He'll be sitting on the table with a duffel bag. And uh, so, you know him, Ed? Has he ever run across him? John? You think so? He's talking about the interstate. Yeah, McDonald's up there. He stays on this side. Like if you're going north, on that side. So, Ed, if you get a chance, share what God's doing in your life. Just read it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he looks at me and you see him. He's, you know, he's, he's everywhere. So, uh, somebody else? John, the beat. We traveled to West Mississippi last night. I've never actually seen a tornado, but the conditions were right for a tornado last night. Yeah. I don't know how it was. And we're going, they kept saying, tornado what? There's Davis County. I don't know where there's Davis County is. They were calling me because I was just a little bit further east of you. <laughs> you can't turn back when you do. Yeah. I know John just forward. Y'all were coming across 84. And it and it did. It got so dark. And uh, I've never been sitting in weather like that. Cloud rolling and running. They were out of ground. Yep. So we were coming back through there. We were just a little further east. It was all happening, coming. So. And then we caught when we got right over here. Well, just uh, up about uh, George County line. Big time. Yep. Praise God. Somebody else. God done something. There. I'm going to brag on y'all Sunday. Man, I was hoping. I'm going to tell you, I went away thinking that I sure hope people went loved on your mom, Miss Betty, because she's been so negative about white folks and about us. And, uh, you know, just being candid. Go ahead. Yeah, she, she called my aunt and she was like, girl, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Them people are nice up there where Buggy goes to church. And they love them so much. And we did. <laughs> so like, she, she never been, you know, white people up there. They embrace her up there. Like, oh, yeah. Awesome. They, I mean, it shocked me. You know, so I'm, when I woke up, she don't know, um, yeah, and all going on about pork and how good the food was. And, she would have came straight from church and it was good. And your aunt ain't come with you this Sunday? Yeah, my aunt ain't come with you this Sunday. She said, if she would have known we were having a big picture, she would have came straight after church. <laughs> 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 she said, I don't even turn my soul on. <laughs> 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 yeah. She said, if we have stuff like that, we got to let her know she can win stuff. That's a major step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're there. They like that? They like that? They like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's a major step. If you hadn't been where Derek's been walking, you know. Oh, He's sweet. Somebody else? Anything else? Tim? I'll come back to you. Well, since uh, Brother Terry's message Sunday about one more round, I'll be honest with you, I've had a, had a rough week this week. That one thing that, you know, one more round I kept going through my head this week is I was starting to have a little pity party Monday. I said, no, I'm not going to do it this way. I just took time out and I said, Lord, one more round. And uh, that's been getting me. I've been sharing with a couple people. That's why I was asking about the, the recording about the pen. Jim's got it on. Jim, I mean, you got three rounds. I got as many CDs as, as you want. As far as okay, so we already uh, have the sound. I already have it. I converted it to sound uh, last night. I do have it on DVD, yeah. but it's a lot. Takes a lot. It's a lot more work, but. I do. I have it on both. So he was over here last night working on that, trying to get ready. Yeah. And again, guys, we need a duplicator. If you're willing to help on the duplicator, we're looking probably maybe over five hundred dollars for a good duplicator. And we haven't nailed it down yet, so we can have the CDs ready when you walk out in the Sunday morning. Since we're over headed with that, so uh, but it's about five hundred dollars for the duplicator. So they're ready. Yeah, and and um, I don't know for the day we ain't talked about it, but I don't know what you're planning on if if there's a charge because you've got labels and and CDs and everything. So um, it probably takes about three or four dollars to make each one with between time and all of that. So 
Um, I don't know if you want to just bless folks or if folks want to just um, purchase them, you know. Like, but anyway. James, did you ever get the DVD on the bandana? Abel's in the office. It was supposed to be dropped off here, the DVD for uh, Jim, you know about the DVD on the I got it. You got it. We can get it on audio or you can get it. Those of you have asked about the, the, the Sunday we did the bandanas. Uh, we got it as soon as the it was made and ready for you. So we uh, You can have it on either. You can get it on either. You can get it DVD or you can get a CD of any of the services. It'd be better to probably do CD, but, we'll not just, but we do have a DVD we want to get it. But I, you know, to give you a bandana, you need to watch that. And then if you have some questions, then we'll go from there. It doesn't mean we're going to give you a bandana if you don't know what's going on. So, uh, the, uh, you see a lot of folks with that bandana. Selena had her tied around her steering wheel. People ask her questions. Uh, a lot of people have had on these.
told you that the federal judge was going to be there. Uh, little did I know him and his wife, Miss Jackie, are very involved in Mobile. They have a uh, rehab center for men. They can take up to 100. They have 33 right now. But they, she has written a book, How to Change Your Community, One House at a Time. And what they do is they go in and uh, to what we would probably call the hood, the inner city, the drug infested areas, and they buy the houses. And then they restore them and uh, put people in them and turn the communities around. And they're working in Pritchard. Now, let me just show you how God works. They're working in Pritchard. Now, here's the deal. Just two weeks ago, I was introduced to a black pastor in Pritchard where they've had 700 saved within the last two months. We're going to connect her and him. And, and through that ministry, it's just going to open up another avenue. Okay? Not only does it connect her and him, but I called Lynn Langley on Monday. Lynn is now the director of PASCO, which is Physical and Spiritual Center. What's the low stand for, Jim? I don't remember. No, I don't remember. Jim and I went over and spoke the other night. I'll be going back in a couple of weeks um, to their guys. But what they are, they have 15 guys right now, and they can have up to 20. And they are a re-entry level group. And what Lynn and them do, they get them and they find them jobs. They pay 125 a week to stay there. And, uh, and they get them out into the community working. And so now we'll be able to connect not only in the community of Pritchard, but we'll connect Randy and Miss Jackie through Lynn so they'll have an avenue to be able to put people to work. And it's kind of an amazing thing how God just kind of begins to put all these networks together uh, and bring us together. And also, the soldiers of the cross, I took Randy and Miss Jackie over and introduced them. And the soldiers of the cross want to get involved with them in their ministry. And uh, Randy and Jackie live in a, well, let me just say, busy neighborhood. So what she does, she goes to all her neighbors now know that everything that they get rid of comes to her, and then that's how they furnish the houses. And she says, we have some of the best stuff that you could ever ask for. I have the book if you want to read it. I've got three books that she autographed for us, and I won't let you keep them because we've got other people reading. Selena read it yesterday, on Monday. I read it all the way through, and it's just not a very thick book, but it talks about changing your community one house at a time. And uh, so it's pretty awesome. And I don't know what God's going to do in the midst of all of that. I'm going to be going over and meet with the Randy and his wife and looking at the ministry and talking about, you know, I told you I want to interview him and see what it's like for a fellow judge to sit on the stand and condemn somebody to death or to prison for life or whatever. He holds their life in the balance of his hand. And uh, they haven't come over and share with us at some point. Uh, we're working toward that. And uh, it's been an interesting perspective from a judge. And uh, he loves the Lord and does so much. And their testimony is pretty, pretty awesome. So uh, praise God. So with all of that, we've been talking. And, uh, you know, you think about what uh, Terry said on Sunday, one more round. You think about so many times you want to give up. And Tim, all of us have been there. I told you just a week ago I was there on that Monday or Tuesday right in that area. And I got the phone call from one of our folks. And just a minute, I just want to tell you how much I enjoyed Easter Sunday. And uh, so God just kind of does that for us. But what about the call? What, uh, when God calls you, how do we respond? Uh, some of you have been stating, you know, I just feel like God's asking me to do something. Or God's... I just said a moment ago, God's wanting me to get up out of the pew. Well, see, that's the deal. You and I have got to, we can't slack up, all right? Uh, we've got to keep forging ahead, okay? I don't, that doesn't mean we don't take a day of rest. That doesn't mean that, you know, we don't have to go to a solitary place, get along with Christ, and just kind of get renewed. It doesn't mean that. But you and I have got to keep moving ahead. And you think about in Mark, when uh, Jesus was calling the disciples, came across uh, Simon and Andrew, Peter, and Andrew, and, and he said, look, follow me, and I'm going to make you uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, fishers of men. And that's what you and I are called to be, is fishers of men. Now, here's the problem. Far too long, we've enjoyed eating the fish, just sitting back. And I'm going to tell you, you know, and, and, and God's called us to be fishers of men. 
Reach out and touch lives, dude. You know, it blesses me, and I know it blessed Derek when his mom gave that testimony, his aunt gave the testimony, because uh, I saw it when it came up. And then also, Tim and another lady came, Miss Sarah Foster, and uh, there's some things there that we're trying to work through with her. And, uh, you know, God just begins to open some doors, and you and I have to make the choice of what we're going to do with that. So, uh, you know, here's our issue. Many of us think, well, I'm not qualified to be called of God. I'm not qualified to teach. I'm not qualified to work in Bible school. I, I'm not qualified, and then you finish the statement. I mean, uh, there's probably been a time when many of us, if not all of us, have made that statement. And here's the thing tonight. We need to change the way we think. We, we hear that little statement that God doesn't call to qualify, or he doesn't. Uh, you know, he, he, he takes and he, he calls, he equips those that he calls, basically. He qualifies the fact that he calls us. He touches our lives. He changes us. And uh, so the thing is, is God does the work. God is the life changer. So you and I need to think a little bit on how we think. Uh, I was in conversation with somebody today. I said, just think about, take your mind in a different direction. Sometimes we need to take our minds in a different direction because once God touches our life, if we're a child of God, from that point, listen, God's got a purpose in our life. We need to grasp hold of that purpose. That the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our life, the body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit of God, and then God gives us. And through that, God calls us. And, and what do we do with that? And you and I have to think about it. Think about Elijah. When Elijah called Elijah, what was he doing? He was plowing. Doing his thing on an everyday basis. We already know, I just told you when he called Peter, Peter was fishing. Uh, so we think about the fact when God called, Elisha had to leave the farming. Peter had to leave what he knew was his job, was fishing. Um, and, and you know, think about it. Uh, you know, back when God called us, God touched our lives. I mean, there is some uncertainties there. There's some where you're trying to struggle. God, what's going to happen tomorrow? But we have to get to the point where we say, God, wherever, wherever. And we talked about this a few weeks ago. God, wherever you call, wherever you take me, wherever you lead me, I'm going to go. And we can't put that fence around our life and say, God, I'm going to stay right here. I'm not going outside this fence. No. If we tell God, wherever you lead, I'll go, then we got to be willing to go there. And sometimes we got to move away from our family. Sometimes we must move away from our family. we got to move away from our friends. Sometimes we have to change our jobs, our vocation. I say God's going to call you to be a full-time pastor or a full-time staff member. But God may change your vocation. And uh, so when you think about it, I like this analogy. Following God sometimes is like stepping out on a sheet of toilet, uh, uh, tissue paper, toilet paper. You know how thin it is. But you find that the tissue paper is on the rock. And you got stability. And the rock is Jesus Christ. He's the one who directs our life. He's the one who energizes our life. And uh, you'll never really feel, realize that there's a rock under the tissue paper until you step on the tissue paper. And that's the beauty of who God is. And so uh, God calls us to walk away from our security base, and that may be part of our life. It's kind of interesting. Yesterday, someone was having some, a procedure. And we were at Baptist in Jackson, and uh, we got back there, and one nurse came in, and then the other nurse came in, and we were just getting the hall. And uh, she said, so I see your pastor. I said, yeah. And, uh, and she looked at, and I, both of them, I don't know what was actually written on the, must be a psychologist or something. They looked on Slim's paperwork and they said, this is fair. And so they said, no, I'm a licensed counselor, psychologist and all that. The second nurse just began to just open up. And she said, you know, at the end, she's not done this before, but she said, just last weekend, I was ready to give the she said, I, I, you know, I'd come to my wit's end with my husband. And, uh, and she said, uh, what do I do? And we spent about 45 minutes just pouring into her life. She looked around a couple times and asked the nurse behind her, the desk, said, you need me. 
And uh, in about 45 minute window there, Selena and I had a chance just to just pour into her life. And we just talked to her about some different avenues. She needed to find her identity in Christ and find her husband. Learn how to love her husband through Christ. She loves Jesus, so therefore it enabled her to love her husband. All this kind of stuff. We just began to encourage her. There was not any abuse there. Uh, they kind of got married on a rebound. She was on rebound. This is her second marriage. Been in it 11 years. Had an eight-year-old boy. And uh, it was pretty interesting to see how God worked in all of that. And we began to just speak into her life. We ended up giving her our cell phone numbers uh, for her to call us. And both Sway and I both said, look, we're we'll driving to Jackson. We're we'll driving to Brandon. They go to Crossgate. I mean, the First Baptist Brandon. And they're looking at accounts for Crossgates. And uh, First Baptist Brandon without a pastor. And, uh, and so she just unloaded. And uh, I thought about that very thing. I said, you know, God, uh, we never know what, what God, how you may use us. And when she walked out, she went to go out, and she turned back around, and she said, you know, y'all, she said, you may not understand this, but I think this was a divine appointment today. And uh, it was, it, it Selena looked at uh, me, and I looked at her, and she said, you know, no other reason, that's why we came up here today. And uh, it was pretty interesting because Lane was able to speak into her life great and uh, talk about some books. And this young lady had read some books that Selena was reading or had read. And uh, and Selena was able to speak in her life in regards to that. So her name is Amy. Her husband's name is Jody. He's a welder. And uh, so if you think about that, just say a prayer for Amy and Jody and uh, just see what God does in their life. So she's supposed to stay in touch with us and I hope she will. Um, but when you think about God's call, think about Matthew. Think about Matthew. Who was Matthew before the call of God? He was what? Who was the most what? Hated. And what did he do? He wrote the first gospel. Uh, you think about the change of life there. You think about uh, uh, David. When David went into Saul's palace. He went in with a harp. Okay? God changed all of that, and David became king, right? Just the, the touch of God. You never know what God's going to do. But here's the deal. God will confirm his call in your life. And then if you follow in commitment to that and obedience, God will affirm the following. And, and God will touch your lives in ways that, that you know, sometimes we just, uh, we, we, we don't even understand the touch of God. And we have it confirmed and it's just like the lights come on. Uh, and, and God wants us to be all that we can be for Him. So when we think about it, when we think about if you're willing to pay it, uh, you know, there's there's some things that just need to happen. And we think about the fact of God's call in our life. The first thing is there's a price to be paid. I'm going to tell you, God's call does not come without some kind of price. You hear pastors, and you've heard me ask several times, what does it cost you to follow Jesus? If we're really followers of Jesus, it's cost us something. It's caused us not to be uh, some kind of event. It's caused us to take a different direction in our life. It's caused us to sever a relationship. It's caused us to change a direction. It's caused us to say no when we really wanted to say yes. Or maybe we've said yes when we really wanted to say and so when you think about the call of God, the call of God is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. And we say Christianity is free, okay? The price of it is free. Jesus paid. But the walk of it is never, never comes with just a, a free pass. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost something in your life to really walk and be the man or the woman that God wants you to be. Uh, so when you think about it, there's a price to be paid. And, and here's the thing. If we're willing to pay the price, We'll get God's best. Don't settle for what's good or don't settle for something morally good when you can have the very best. When God calls, He wants His best for us. And so we step out to that and, and we pay the price and then God rewards, rewards us. Also, there's a price to be paid and there's a path to be walked. What does the Bible say? Straight and narrow path. Now, you and I have to make that choice. We're going to walk that path. Going back to John. He may not have been ready to walk the path, okay? Uh, the thing is, we, you know, we don't know his life. Uh, we don't know what's there keeping him from saying, okay, God, the surrender. Could be his manhood. Could be some other things. We don't know anything about him. 
It's not easy sometimes for guys just to give up. You know, it's hard enough for women, but it's a lot harder for guys at times, especially those women. Uh, it's hard to give up, but when we think about the call of God, there's a price to be paid, there's a path to be walked. Some people don't want to walk the path. We want our cake and we want to eat it too, and that's not going to get us where God wants us to be. There's sacrifice involved in following the Lord Jesus and in being what God really wants us to be. We think about that step on the tissue paper, that's a step of faith. Life has to become a step of where we sit back, and that's a process because some of us can can see and, and walk in a deeper faith than others. We can say, okay, God's got this. And God is moving us. God is inching us. And God is working toward that faith aspect in each of our lives. And so uh, we think about the price to be paid and the path to be walked. Uh, thirdly, think about some principles. The godly principles that God gives us throughout His Word. There's principles to be observed. Uh, you know, the greatest commandments, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We know that. We hear that quoted time and time and time again. Is that reality? That's the point where God wants us to be. The call of God, loving Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Then He says, love, the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as your sin. And, and you know, God's even in, in recent days, is just, I don't know, opened my eyes a lot about that. And loving our neighbors ourselves, just the fact of watching folks sometimes. Uh, watch people. Keep, keep in mind. You know, I've told you on Facebook, be careful what you say. If somebody's got, you got a friend, and, and, and you know, they say something online, speak back to them. You don't have to do it in public. Message them in private. Or see them in private. See, you, know, you better rethink what you did. And, and, and watch how we act. Watch how I act. Watch how you act. As, as people of God that, you know, we're held accountable because there's principles to be observed. And you and I as children of God need to watch how we respond. I can guarantee you that people drove up to the house on Sunday afternoon and they had some blinders on. That's why I told you in the service Sunday to be aware that there were going to be atheists there. There was an agnostic there. And God knows whoever else. But we know they were there. All right? And, and, and we know that, I, I hope and pray that they saw the love of God. And, and we knew, I mean, in Derek's folks, we know that there was some skepticism and, and you know, we wanted to love them and they came. And so their perspective, and, and you know, sometimes we're graded a whole lot harder than we should be, but it's not up, it is up to us to prove who Jesus really is in our life. That's significant. Um, you know, you heard the story that Terry told on Sunday about Bit, the little black boy. And uh, Terry was fired at the church because he stood with the little black boy. You know, there's times we got to take a stand. And there's times that we got to stand because of God. And it may not be popular. And it's difficult. And it hurts. And we lose friends.